If you want to start game development or you want to improve your current skills, in this video I'll be recreating one of the micro games from Among Us, but that will be just the start of the big picture. I want to create the full game, but with a twist. I want to drop all the killing and all the line from the game. And who knows, maybe it will turn out better than the original. The tutorials are going to be both in Bolt and C Sharp. In this video I'll be using Bolt, but if you want the C Sharp version, the link is in description. So let's get started. Now I haven't played this game myself. Maybe if I get a million views in this video, I'll consider it. From watching one of the Mr. Beast video, I found one marker game or a task as they're called in the game that I think is pretty good if you're trying to get started with making game. So this is the one that we're going to make in this video. I need some art to create this game. So I just use a snippet tool, take a screenshot of the game, open it up in Krita. And what I need is two states of the switch when it's up or down and also the two states of the light when it's on or off. Export all of those files and now we have all the art for the game. Now I went through that real fast because I'm assuming that your main interest in how to make the game, not how to create the art for the game. So now I'll slow down so you can follow each step. And for the game engine, I'm going to go with using Unity. Now there's a lot of discussion which engine you should use and which one is better, but that shouldn't matter for this video. So just take a look. If you like the process of Unity and you can understand it, then the tool is good for you and you can start making games with that. You can always switch to another tool if you want later on. So I'll create a new project and it's going to be a 2D project. And the first thing is I'm going to import all my art assets. Just drag those files in to the asset location at the bottom. Now I can drag the BG, the background file, to the hierarchy. Go into the game window to see how it looks on the camera. And by selecting the main camera in the hierarchy, I want to change the background from this blue color to a black color. That looks much better. Now I'll change the size of the camera from five to four so that the background would cover more of the camera. The next step is adding the switches. So I'll go back to the scene and add the down switch into the hierarchy under the BG game object by just dropping it on top. Now I need to position it at the right place so that it will cover the other knob that is in that place. And for the new down object to be on top, I need to change the order layer from zero to one. So it would be above the background. If you need to zoom in, you can use the scroll. You can also change the alpha channel of the color to make it transparent. So you can see where is it positioned in the back, move it around to position at the right spot. You can also move the object by changing the position in the transform component inside the specter. It might be a better choice if you know the exact values that you want to place it at but I'm just eyeballing it for this game. Now I want to group all of the parts of the switch, the down switch, the up switch, and the on and off. So I'll create an empty game object and position the down object inside of the game object. You need to make sure that the down object is positioned at a zero zero and I'll rename the newly created game object to switch. Now I can add the up image into the switch object Reset the transform so that the positions can be at zero, zero. Now order in layer needs to be set to two so that it will be above the down switch at all times. Because the idea that I have for turning the switch up or down is just by switching the active state of the game object. So if the up game object is turned off, then we'll see the down object. If we turn the up object back, we'll see the switch in the up position. Now you might have noticed that the up image and the down image are not perfectly aligned. So just because it was bothering me, I shift the up object a little bit to compensate for that. And now it's all perfect. So now you can repeat the same process for the light on and off. So the position of game objects in Unity is really close to the way you position them in Photoshop or other photo editing software. You have your layers, which are game objects in Unity, and then you can also put game objects inside the game objects to group them together. So I added on and off images into the game, reset the position, set the order layers, and then I created another game object, light, placed both of those objects inside there, and position the light object where it needs to go. Set the order in layer for on to two. And now it's working exactly like the up and down. 
If you've seen Unity for the first time, you might think that that is a lot of things that you need to know to use it. But with everything that I just covered, you're pretty much seeing everything that you can know to position the objects inside your scene. You can also rotate and scale the objects in your scene, but they work in a similar way as positioning. So now with this knowledge that you have, you can start placing assets in your game. The game that I'm creating right now has five switches. So I could just go and create duplicates of the switch that I just created by clicking Ctrl D on the keyboard. But there is another way of creating duplicates or clones that can help us in the long run. And it's by creating prefabs. To create a prefab, you can just drag any game object from your hierarchy into the assets folder, and that will create a prefab. Now you see the benefits of prefab shortly, but right now let's do some cleaning up. And I have these images in my assets folder that I probably should move into another folder. So I'll create a folder called art and move those images inside there. Now I'll add another switch to my game by dragging the prefab into the hierarchy and position it at the second switch place. Do the same for the other three. And now the game has five switches. All of the assets for our game are already in the scene. The next step is creating the logic for the game. So like I said, I'll show two ways of creating the logic. And the first one is going to be by using visual scripting. And I'll be using Bolt. You can find Bolt in the asset store and it is free. So you can import that into your project and then install it by clicking on one of the installation files inside of the Bolt folder. Click import. And after the import is done, you're going to get a setup wizard. Click next and I'll use the human naming for this video. Scroll down and click next. Then scroll down again and click generate. That's gonna start creating everything that is required for Bolt to run. The setup is complete, so just close that and we can start adding the logic for our switch. So here is what I said that is gonna be beneficial in the long run for us to have a prefab. So I can go and select the prefab now and add a flow machine. A flow machine is a bolt component that has the graph or the macro that will be running. And that's where we're gonna be using to create our logic. So I'll create a new macro, call it switch. And all of these changes that I'm doing to the prefab are also changing on the objects that are using the prefab. So all of our switches are actually getting updated when I'm modifying the prefab. So when I added the flow machine to the graph, you might have noticed that there's another component that was added and it's variables. And the variables can be used to store some settings for the object specifically. Now, if you want to see what's inside the prefab, you can always double click on the prefab and it's going to open up the prefab in the scene view. To create a variable, you can type in the name of the variable. We'll type in up and click the plus button on the side. And then you can specify what type of variable it is. And the variable type for up is going to be game object because I'm going to connect it to the up game object that is inside of our prefab. I'll do the same thing for the on because those are the two game objects that I want to change the active state of. I'll add another variable is on. It's going to be a type of Boolean. And by default, I'll set it to true by checking the checkbox. I'll explain more about this variable later on. Now that I added all the variables, I can go click Edit Graph to start creating the logic inside a flow graph. So a new flow graph starts with two units or nodes, the start event and the update event. You can find the variables that we just created right here under Object. I'll add the get up variable unit to the graph by clicking and dragging it into the graph. And also I'll add the on variable same way. So what I want to do now, when you click on the switch to toggle the active state of the up game object, just like I did when I was setting up the scene. And to do that, I need to add a unit. You can search for a unit that you want to add by right clicking on the mouse. And what I'm searching for is on mouse. We do have a couple options here, but the one that I'm interested in is on mouse up. So by clicking on that, we get a new unit in our graph. This is one of Unity's events and it will be triggered whenever the mouse is clicked while it's over a collider of the game object. And we'll add a collider a little bit later. But for now, let's create the logic for toggling the active state of the up image. For that, we'll need to start making connections. And you can make connections by clicking on the circles on the sides of the units and dragging them out. After you let go of the mouse, a search will appear 
for you to find the unit that you're trying to connect it to. We'll search for game object set active, add that, and you can see the connection between those two units was made. Now there are two types of connections. So the circle that we just used, and those are value connections. So you use those to pass data around or values. The other type of a connection is a triangle, and those are the flow connections. You can think of the flow connections as the flow of your logic. So in our case, our flow starts from the on mouse up event, and then it flows to the set active unit. So we'll make that connection. The set active unit has some input values, and the input connections are on the left side of the unit, and the output connections are on the right side of the unit. So it retrieves the values that it needs to execute the logic inside the unit. And after it's done doing that, the flow continues on. Now to toggle the set active state, I need to know if the game object is currently set active to true or set active to false. So the unit that can give me that value is the game object get active self. I am using the variable up for the game object input, and it's because I'm changing the active state of the up game object. To toggle active state of the game object, I can use the negate unit to create the toggling of the value between true and false. So this is the complete logic for toggling the active state of the up game object. And now we can go and test it out and make sure it's working like we're expecting. But first we need to add that collider that I was talking about that is required for the on mouse up event to work. So I'm gonna select the switch prefab, go to inspector and at the very bottom, click add component. And the component that I'm adding is a box collider 2D. To see or edit the collider shape, you can click on the edit collider and that will display the box that is gonna be used for the collider. I need to stretch it a little bit more so it can cover more of the switch. That looks much better. And now I can click the play button at the top and test out if the switches work. And the switches work just like we expect them to. So that's a good start, but we need to continue. I already showed you the basics for creating connections between the units. So now I'll speed up the process of making this game. Back to the flow graph. And right here on the start event, I'm initializing the active state of the on game object by using the is on variable. And we'll use the is on variable to configure the starting state for each switch separately. Now we need to add the logic for turning the light on and off. And that logic is exactly the same as for switching the switch up and down. So what I'm gonna do is select the four units that are responsible for that game logic, hit control D on the keyboard, that creates the duplicate of those units, drag them down, but there's one change that I need to do to this logic, and it is to update the is on variable to the current state of the on switch. You can find the set variable unit by right clicking on the graph and searching for it, but you can also just drag the variable from the variable list onto the graph. But before you place it in the graph, you can use the Alt key on the keyboard to switch it to set variable instead of get variable. I'll place this unit right before set active unit, make all the connections, and also I need to switch the get variable from up to on. Now let's go and check if everything is working like expected. Looks like everything's working correctly at this point, so we can move on. I'll add another Boolean variable, is up, and I'll be using it to set the initial position of the switch, which I'm gonna be setting up right now. Back in the graph, I'll duplicate the three nodes that I use for initializing the active state of the on game object, and I'll use it to initialize the up game object in the same way. Now let me show you how that initialization actually works. You can go to the scene, select any of the switch that is inside the hierarchy, and you can set what value you want that switch to have. So I went through all the switches, chose some random starting values, and now I can click play, and you can see the switches start at a different position now. The next step is adding the ability to win the game. And the way you can win this game is by turning on all of the lights. So first, let's create some text that we will display when you win the game. In the hierarchy, right click, and then under UI, there is a text game object. Click on that to create it. And the text that I'll write is, you did it. I'll go to the game view to see how the text looks inside the game and tweak some settings to make it look like this set active state to false so that we display that only when you have all the lights on. I'll put the main logic on the PG game object. So inside there, I'll add a flow machine. Add two variables, switch count, 
which is going to be an integer type and a value of five because we have five switches. Also a win text that's going to be a game object and we'll connect it to your win text from the hierarchy. Now for the flow machine, instead of using the macro source, I'll use the embedded since the graph is going to be used only in this game object. Click edit graph and in this graph, I'll have a custom event that will be attached to this object that will allow me to trigger a custom event from any of the switches so that I can keep track of how many switches are on. I'll have one argument for the custom event and that argument is going to be set to one if the switch was turned on and set to negative one if the switch was turned off. The event name is going to be switch change and I'll need another variable but for this one I'll use a graph variable and the graph variable can be changed only inside the graph. I'll use this variable to keep track of how many switches are on. So let's set up the logic now. So whenever the custom event is triggered, I take the value that is passed in at argument zero and add it to the current value of the variable on count. Pass that value to the set variable and connect the flow. That is the logic for keeping track of how much lights are on. So if negative one is gonna be passed in, that's gonna subtract from the on count. If one is passed in, that's gonna add to the on count. Now the second part of the graph is checking if all of the switches are on. And we can do that by comparing the switch count with the on count. So right here, I use an equal to compare them together. And the Boolean value from the equal is connected to the set active state of the win text. So whenever the on count is five, the text can be displayed. If it's not five, the text is going to be hidden. So that's all for this flow graph. Now let's go to the switch flow graph and use the custom width that we just created. So right here, I added one of the places where I need to use the custom event, and it's on the start event. It's responsible to count all the switches that are on by default. I have a branch unit here, and it changes the flow based on the Boolean input. And the Boolean input that I used is, is on. So if the switch is on, then it's gonna execute the true flow, which is gonna trigger the custom event. For the custom event trigger, we pass in one because we're counting the switch that is on. The second place where we need to use the custom event trigger is when we toggle the switch on and off. And in here, the custom event gets triggered every time because there's a change in the state of the switch. So because of that, I need to switch between using one or negative one for the argument. And I do that with using the select unit. So the Boolean input of the select unit is connected to is on and that changes which value is being used. So if the switch is on, then the value one will be used to pass in for the argument. And if the switch is off, the value of negative one is gonna be passed in for the argument zero. Also, the custom event trigger has a game object input and you can see that I pass in the transform get parent because the custom event is under the parent of the switch which is the BG game object. This is the last part of the logic that we need for the game to function correctly. And now we can go and test it out. Start the game. And now if I enable all of these switches, you can see the text appears, you did it. If I turn any of the switches off, then the text disappears. So we can say that the micro game is done. There'll probably be some tweaks that we'll have to do when we implement this micro game into the actual game. But for now, that is where we're gonna leave this game off. Now, I hope you learned a lot from this video and that I give enough information for you to recreate this game on your own. If you also want to see the logic of this game made in C Sharp, there's a link in the description so you can check that out. Maybe for you, it'll be easier to implement it using C Sharp instead of visual scripting, but that choice is up to you. If you're just beginning with game development, I do recommend you to actually try recreating this game, follow the tutorial step by step, because that is one of the ways that you can learn to create games. Now I'm planning to at least make another micro game from Among Us before I start making the main game. Be sure to subscribe so you get notified when the next one is gonna be out. If you have any suggestions or questions, write in the comments below. Click on the like button if you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one.